Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you believe it? It is Sunday morning again. It seemed as if it was just yesterday when I was sitting around saying the same things, basically saying Eddie Marcus here again. Wow. But it is a Sunday morning and I'm thinking about what should I talk to you about today? So I'm thinking that perhaps I should have a message that's directed specifically to people who call themselves Christians or people who who refer to the Bible or to scriptures a lot. I used to uh, read the Bible all the time. A few times I read several times straight through when I was locked up in prison. Had nothing to do but read. And um, I recall some of the stories, and I'd like to share one with you. It has to do when uh, God made Adam and Eve, and they were in the garden. You remember that story? It might be a little different here and there, depending upon where you were, when you heard it, and from whom you heard it from. But the story generally is about Adam and Eve in the garden. And it was like God introducing them to what God had prepared for them, the world. Uh, he was saying basically anything that they wanted to do in the world was there. They were unlimited. They could do anything. This was their heaven. This is the Garden of Eden, the thing that is prepared for them so that the life that God would have them live, they can live it. One thing there was a, a don't do out there. And uh, it, it, it it's almost like if you can imagine God, Adam and Eve, looking out at the world, knowing that everything is theirs. Ain't nobody else there, supposedly, but Adam and Eve and all the other stuff that's there. And God is letting them know that from the beginning of time, throughout eternity, which would include our time, that all things that we would be able to imagine as human beings, this is what they're known, we would be able to do. We would have the gifts, we would have the skills, we would have the talents, we'd have the desire, and we'd have the most major benefit is that we'd had joy in our lives. All of that just available to us. This is what is made available. Now, but this is the choice of the creator. This is what is available if you make that choice of the creator. What does that mean? That means if you were made to be a pain, a, 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 a painting, then you exhibit what the painter painted. The vessel, my friends, that you have to represent. So, if you are of God, you know, and you represent. If you love your parents, you watch them, you observe them, you understand them, you represent. I heard Chris Rock one time say on the stage that uh, people were talking about why he didn't uh, get back on uh, Will Smith when he took that slap. He gave a few reasons, but the main reason that he gave before he ended the program was his mama, he had parents, and his parents taught, taught him not to fight in front of white folks. And he got a standing ovation. Don't be out there publicly fighting, acting a fool. So these people, Adam and Eve, supposedly, these two, were supposedly taught. And here they are. Don't do this, but everything else you can do. Now, the story goes that somehow there came uh, a thought. Some people say the devil. Some people say the snake. You say all kinds of things. But the truth of the matter is, is there was another thought came, especially since you give, you're given choice. When you say this, but you got choice. God made Adam and Eve got choice when you say don't do this at trio or there or don't bite off of this or don't do this or don't go that way. That's mean you can go, but you saying you got choice. If you go this way, you got some instructions. <laughs> if you go this way, you're gonna run in a ditch. And 
if you go this way, you're going to be, as I always call it, heavenly. Running in a ditch, a heavenly. Now, running in a ditch meaning basically going any other way other than the way that was designed for your happiness, for your dreams to come true. There was a way that was designed for your dreams to come true, for you to live your dreams. Now, if you go off that road, you're going into chaos. So, if having these thoughts and this influence, if one of them had decided, wow, I think this might be a nice way to go, or maybe I, maybe it might be different. The story goes that the influence was just totally, you were lied to. It won't happen the way you were told. You Things would be better if you went this way. Now, some people try to say that was a, that was uh had to do the same old spirit that you heard about in in uh, heaven when the angels were there and this lucifer this beautiful angel wanted to run things it's the same old stuff in the garden oh no 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 don't believe that things could be better you can do all kinds of things all you got to do is try this try that but but we're not supposed to well don't believe that. You're not going to die. You're just going to be introduced to a whole brand new world. A whole brand new world that you're going to be introduced to. Now, what was supposed to happen? Both of them were supposed to say, get the hell out of here. Thought, we got heaven. We Things can't get no better than this. Or if it can, let somebody else discover it, not us. That's what it was supposed to say. Now, if one of the parties decided, well, yeah, I think, hmm, I think I tried. It might be good. Then the other party was supposed to say, well, I hope you don't do that, but that is your choice. My choice is to follow this path. If you want to follow that other path, go ahead on. Boom. But I'm going to follow this path. That was supposed to happen. But what happened was, for some strange reason, the one who had been influenced to go try something different had such a hold on the other one that the other one decided to put the other path of life on hold and just go this way. Might have been all kind of influence. What kind of influences can you imagine why people follow people down the wrong path? Usually sometimes they got some attachment to them. Sometimes you're getting something from them. Uh, it might be business deals that cause you to go down the path. It might be benefits for your your own bottom line that cause you to go down the path. It might be has something to do with sex that cause you to go down the path. But all kinds of reasons that cause you to go down the path. But you're off the path that takes you down to that paradise of that having your dreams come true and living your dreams. You're off that. So what happened, according to the way that story went, is that there was an agreement between the people who had been instructed about the way to life. They went off on a different path. And from then on, it was all messed up. Can you imagine the, the divorce awaits that goes through to people now who hooked up, doing the wrong thing, have no business being together? These guys, they had business, I guess, being together. They went the same way. But look at the chaos that was started. It was because they went opposite the path that would lead to life i'm sure they had all kinds of problems you know anybody married <laughs> people always say you you if life is wonderful dating and everything till you get married then hell breaks loose i don't know about that or do i but anyway you can say it with the kids the kids start talking about this and and they killing each other and that story goes on and on but what it what it boils down to ladies and gentlemen what it boils down to is what has happened here today. It happened in the garden. God was invisible. You couldn't see God. What they were, the messages that they were given were just natural messages that were a, an awareness. They were made that way. It's what you call natural. It's just something innate. This is what, this is what. Don't. But they decided to go the opposite way. Now, what God had promised them, they stay on the right path. 
they would have everything they need for everything that they want, everything that they desired in this life. Certain things were essential for survival, like food, clothing, and shelter. They would have to worry, don't have to worry about that. Why? Because they were given these things, these requirements, and they got the gifts to provide. And not only did they got the talent, now they go out and take care of these businesses, take care of these things that needs to be taken care of. But they also need education and health care. And then they, didn't, they didn't just stop there. They spoke all the way through time up to today about these that's uh, that's available to you. But that was on the path of life. But they couldn't see that. So they could try and make things happen. And so ladies and gentlemen, the message today is this. That the division started in the garden. It almost at the birth almost. And it has continued throughout this day. What was required in the beginning was to reject the opposite world. That was what was required at that date, was to reject the opposite world view. And to stay lined on that which would bring you your heart's desire. And they didn't do it. So what is required today? What is required today is that you return back to that moment in time. Whatever brings you back to that point, brings you back to that point. I can't tell you what will bring you back to that point. I can tell you what brought me back, but I'm sure you're not interested right now. But it brings you back to that point in time that you know where you are. A decision is being made. You now. You at the, like the prodigal son, you eating food with the pigs and the hogs in the slop. That's where you eat that now. So you got to make this decision in time. Are you going to continue eating with the pigs? Are you going to continue eating slop? Or are you going to turn around? Are you going to continue making obviously no difference between you and everybody else that goes along with this hell that we're living in? Or are you going to give a different view, a different reflection? Are you going to do different? Are you going to start the other way and have the evidence that you're concerned about the righteousness of life? Or are you just going to be lost in what's going on, pouting with your mouth pouting? Like every morning, you turn on the television, you go on the social uh, media systems, and you find all these different stations, cable stations, and all these commentators talking. So I'm talking about lifting up the devil and lying and cheating and taking over the country. Others talking about stopping it. But nobody, nobody talking about taking you higher. I don't care. They're just saying this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. We got this guy saying this. This guy saying that. And I'm saying over and over. Where are the conversations about solutions? How do you fix the problem? If you got a problem with people not having food, how do you fix that? If you got a problem with people having pro in housing, how do you fix that? I'm talking about fixing it. If you got people having problems with education, how do you fix that? Healthcare, how do you fix that? Transportation, how do you fix that? We're not talking about the bull. We're talking about fixing it. Nobody should have to worry about hunger, homelessness, lack of education, healthcare, and other things that are available. Nobody. And that's because it's on this side. But we're not on the side. How do you fix it? There ain't but one way, as far as I know. Now, there might be many ways. But the way I know is that you got to resist. You got to resist. And what your resisting does is really not in our hands or my hands. It's really in God's hands. Sometimes when you resist, it affects a lot of people. And a lot of people see and understand what you're talking about, and they are moved, and they're drawn closer to uh, God. They're just drawn close to God. Sometimes it doesn't do anything for the people. And sometimes God will allow that demon to kill you. And why would God allow that demon to kill you when you really don't, don't want to die? But why would that God allow that demon to kill you because you're worth more than living in hell. 
and God wants to free you from living in hell because God got something else better for you. And so God will allow that most evil one to come and free you from this hell so that you can live in the world that God has truly built for those who reject Satan and all Satan's ways. Ah, I guess that's a pretty good message. Where do you stand today? Are you satisfied with the way the world is? Are you standing up trying to make sure that you guarantee people that not only get these education loans forgiven, but education becomes free so that all kids can, can have, and anybody that's one education can have access to it. Are you demanding or standing up and making sure that your representatives know that everybody should have health care? Are you telling them that if they don't know how to do that, don't believe it can be done, then don't come talking to you about your vote because you're not interested? Are you telling them that everybody who is workable should have a career that gives them an opportunity to engage in the process so we can stop talking about leeches? Because everybody will be entitled because they participated in the process thereof. Are you saying that? And is anybody talking about that this morning other than me? Or is anybody wanting that other than me? I know the Republicans are not talking about it. I know the Democrats are not talking about it. No liberty. Who? I don't. Well, I'm sure there might be somebody talking about it. I ain't stupid enough to think that I'm the only one out here talking about it. But I must say, I'm not hearing anybody else. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you get something out of this, maybe if you like it, like it. If you want to share it, share it. If it makes you sick, put it on hold and watch it again later. <laughs> Thank you so very much.